Are you ready to take the next step in your career or business? With Higher Life Recruiting and Consulting, you can get the help you need to reach your goals. Our experiences span multiple industries, giving us the ability to source top talent across various fields. We specialize in STEM and high-tech industries, but we are equally adept at recruiting and professional services. Our services include career consulting, resume writing, LinkedIn consulting, interviewing, lead generation, sourcing, and talent mapping. Follow us on Instagram at Get Hire With Us. Order yours today to experience all the benefits of Ash Kick and Natural Body Butter. With skin so smooth and soft, you'll thank us for it. Shop Ash Kickin' online. That's A S H K I C K I N dot com. Get ready for a Memorial Day weekend event you don't want to miss. The Foundational Black American Expo, coming to the Black Academy of Arts and Letters Saturday, May 27th. This empowerment expo is hosted by Tariq Nasheed of the Hidden Colors Film Series and will feature several networking workshops and seminars. The FBA Expo will also showcase some of the most phenomenal black-owned businesses and vendors from all over the country. And a live musical performance by Kiki Wyatt. This is the hottest event of the year. For tickets and vending opportunities, go to FBAExpo.com. That's FBAExpo.com. Boom. All right. What's going on, guys? I'm here. What's going on, man? I'm here. I'm here. Let everybody else know that we're live right now. Glad to have y'all tuning in. I'm uh, an hour late. I'm, it's 8 o'clock out here in L.A. Usually I'm on at 7. And uh, is there daylight? Something going on with the daylight? Still daylight out here a little bit. So the days are, are longer. It's throwing me off. But nevertheless, I'm here. How y'all doing, man? Glad to have you guys tuning in live right now. Just letting everybody on social media know that I'm live right now, ladies and gentlemen. Just letting everybody know. Glad you guys are tuning in. I would like to also remind you that the FBA... Expo is happening next Saturday. Body on social oh, media. My sound down. X FBA Expo happening next Saturday. So you guys need to get your tickets at fbaexpo.com. You can look down here in the um, profile section and get that right now, ladies and gentlemen. Let me let folks know I'm live. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on. All right. Just letting everybody know I'm live across all platforms. But I'm here, man. How y'all doing, man? We're here. Shout out to the FBA family. Um, boom. Papi Akute and Lola Vuve. That's how we greet each other in foundational black American tub culture. That means peace and love. Papi Akute and Lola Vuve. That's in the foundational black American tut niece language that our people created in order to survive, and you can get your flags at um, officialfba.com, ladies and gentlemen. Officialfba.com to get your flags. Officialfba.com. It's going to be popping in Dallas. We got a lot of folks coming. It is going to be a packed house in Dallas next Saturday. We got so many phenomenal speakers that's going to be there. We're going to have a great time. Yeah, yeah, Texas alone is going to be deep. And I got a lot of love from Texas. Texas, that's why Dallas, I wanted to have the event in Dallas because for, for years, Dallas has shown me so much love. And I've been promising Dallas I'm going to do a big event for Dallas, and this is it. I'm going to keep my promise. I've kept my promise. Every time I would have a movie premiere, Dallas would be the first city to sell out. Dallas always shows support. Dallas is a very underrated city. Good brothers and sisters out there in Dallas. Yeah. 
So I want everybody to go down there and um, get some of that Dallas love and some of that Texas hospitality. Ladies and gentlemen, and we're waiting on everybody to come on in the room because there's a lot of things we're going to chop up game about. What's up, Pomona? Shout out to Pomona. I was in Pomona yesterday at the L.A. County Fair. We had a great time. It took the family out there. We had a great time at the L.A. County Fair. The, my, the children really enjoyed it. But um, a lot of stuff we're going to touch on tonight. We're going to touch on it real fast. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Right now, today's topic, tonight, we're talking about online trolls, particularly the white supremacist ones. They're trying to get them a form of revenge because the white supremacists, they've been taking a lot of L's. They're taking a lot of L's. They're getting desperate for any kind of win. They're getting desperate. When you start doing things like lynch, when you lynch special needs black youths like they did with Jordan Neely, and then people fund these suspected white supremacists who do things like this, Family, that's not a sign of strength. That's a sign of desperation. When you move like that, that means you're getting desperate. And these white supremacists are getting very desperate. And we have to understand the game and understand how to navigate here. You said you can't hear me. Well, Lex, Rena, that's because you have an iPhone 1, ma'am. That's why you can't hear me. Everybody else can hear me fine. I'm going to need you to go down to the, not even Apple store, just go to the mall and go to the kiosk in the middle where Tarbaj is selling repairs for iPhone 1s. You, don't even, you can't even go to the Apple store. They don't have any more parts for your iPhone 1, ma'am. You got to go to Tarbaj at the kiosk in the mall, right next to the Cinnabon, all right? And let's get an upgrade on that iPhone 1, beloved. Let's get an upgrade on that. Anyway, the audio is fine. But listen, these white supremacists are getting desperate and they want to exert their authority over us. And in New York, we got to keep our eyes and our ears open. Because what happened to our brother Jordan, that's not in a vacuum. These people are getting very desperate. In New York, speaking of New York, did y'all hear about the case? There were two black boys who were missing. And the two black boys, their bodies were found in two different rivers in New York. That's a horrible story. All right, two bodies found in Manhattan rivers are identified as missing boys. Like 11-year-old boy, 13-year-old boy. Bodies found in rivers out there in New York City. One in the Hudson River and um, the other one in the Harlem River. Yeah? This is funny style. This is very funny style. This is very weird. Yeah? Since the boys were missing, searches have been underway. Who who harmed these boys? Huh? What was this about? And the, the story is kind of vague. They're not saying anything. Come on, New York City got a lot of cameras all over the place. They got to know something. Huh? This might be the work of the usual suspects. Huh? What's up, United Red? You said, where's the museum? The museum is 2131 West Jefferson Boulevard in Los Angeles. That's where the beautiful Hidden History Museum is. And by the way, we're having a Juneteenth event on June 17th, ladies and gentlemen. If you're out here in L.A. and if you want to come to L.A., come down to the museum then. We're going to have food, drinks. It's going to be a nice gala, entertainment. We're going to chop up, have a great time. Um, get your tickets for that at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. But 
those boys missing like that, that that's suspicious. That's another suspicious thing. Who harmed them boys like that? Yeah. Uh, mods, we have a, a musty tether in here. We got to get this musty tether. Talking that tethers say the same thing over and over. That's how you can tell they're a tether. Tethers have no material. They're just like the white supremacist trolls. They just say the same thing over and over again because they don't have any wit or any original thought. But we're in here. But like I said, New York City and other places, not just New York, some funny style stuff is going on out here. Now, in New York, there was a case, and I talked about this a few days ago, of a white woman who worked at um, the hospital up there, I think in the Bronx. She was, um, there was a, a, a slight altercation over one of those city bikes. In the video, it appeared that the black youths purchased the bike, and the woman was trying to take the bike from the youth, and they were kind of arguing back and forth. She started yelling for help for no reason, as if, as if she was being assaulted, which we suspect of being based on racism. Then she stopped yelling to hide her badge and then started yelling again. The young boy, the, the young man, the black kid, kept showing his phone like, hey man, I purchased this bike. This bike is on my account. She never said that that was her, the, she purchased the bike. She never said that. So she's yelling and then she started fake crying and they called her out for fake crying. And then she started talking about, oh, don't, you're hurting my fetus. Like, I ain't touching you. you touching me. And then she snatched the guy's phone. She actually stole the guy's phone and he took it back from her. Bellevue. She works at Bell Bellevue. So now, we posted it. I posted it and put the correct caption under it. Went super viral. Got almost 6 million views. Um, some people found out who she was got in touch with the hospital. The hospital, they've kind of put her on leave, as they should. And boy, the white supremacists were pissed. And then she went and got a lawyer, and a lawyer put out some, some janky receipts talking about, we got a receipt that she purchased the bike, but he blurred out the timestamp on which the bike was purchased, which was the important part. So all the white supremacists were like, yeah, See, she was in the right. No, 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 no. That has not been proven. That's not been proven. So now the her lawyer is talking about filing defamation suits against the media and all of this stuff. And the white supremacists are very mad. They're trying to use this case and others to get revenge against folks who call out their racism. Folks don't like their racism called out. See, people want to play the game and escape the name. You know? They want to play the game and escape the name. You want to practice white supremacy, but you don't want to hold on to that label. And let me show my original post. Let me show my post about the story. What is it? Hold on. Where is it? All right, this is my original post about the story. Yeah. So the white supremacists are like, well, this is defamation. It's not defamation. You better read my post very good. A suspected white supremacist, not calling her a white supremacist, but based on her actions, I suspect she could be. It's not defamation. Tried to steal a city bike from a black kid after he paid for it. In the video, he keeps saying that he paid for it. It's on his account. And it appears that she was stealing it from him allegedly. She went through all the Karen tactics. Didn't call her Karen. I said she's going through the Karen tactics. See, words matter. No defamation. Trying to get the black youths hemmed up, screaming for help, which she did. Fake crying and mayo babbling, which she did. This is not defamation. All right. And the white supremacists are mad because on a grassroots level, they were able to punish somebody for their racism. This person got 
laid off or put on time out from their job. All right? As they should if you're behaving like this. Because, see, the, the real problem is what she's doing after whoever paid for the bike. See, that's the problem. She's up here yelling and doing all of these Carolyn Bryant tactics. That's problematic. Because those tactics are seeped in anti-black racism. That's what she's getting called at, out for. But the white supremacists do not like for them to get punished from the grassroots. And then you have uh, the white people calling it out. And I'm going to play some clips of some of the white people calling it out. And then the reaction of some of the, the people from the dominant society upset with the white people for calling it out. This guy here, let me play his thing. Where's this guy? He calls out a lot of white supremacist things. Tizzy Entertainment. So this guy here calls out a lot of stuff. And he said, it's clear a lot of people don't actually get what the actual problem is in the video. It was never about stealing a bike, which is correct. This is a white man speaking truth to power. Please help me help! The people who are citing this article as proof that we were wrong to call her out in the first place clearly don't understand what our problem with her is. If you're saying, oh, this is proof that we were wrong, that tells me that you believe our issue was white woman tries to steal black man's bike. And that's not it. Right. That is not what we have right. a problem with. Right. What we have a problem with is her behavior in that video. Now, I believe that that young man genuinely believes he rented that bike. Let's assume for the sake of argument, she believes that as well. Uh, one of them is mistaken. Maybe the app messed up, assigned it to both of them. But let's say going into this, they both honestly believe that is their bike. His way of dealing with this is to say, this is my bike. I rented this bike. And he has the app open on his phone to show that he rented this bike. In fact, it looks like sometimes he even just trying to show her on the phone that he rented this right. bike. How did she respond? Why took his phone? What's wrong with you? She stole his phone. Right. Right. This woman stole his phone. This is what we're saying. She stole his phone. She's acting a damn fool. No, miss that part? that she snatched his phone out of his hand and took it away from him. And he's like, the fuck are you doing? Don't take my phone. And then he took it back from her. If she believes that's her bike, why doesn't she stay in that case? Her phone is right here. She pulls it out at the end of the video. Why doesn't she go, no, sir, I rented the bike here. Look, you can see right here. She doesn't make that argument. Why not? I believe she decides in that moment that he isn't worth making the argument to. Instead, she decided to scare him. She doesn't think he's worth her time or consideration. So instead of having a rational conversation, she just starts yelling, help, help, expecting him to be like, yo, what the fuck? And walk away. Only he doesn't do that. His friend pulls out a phone and is like, nah, you're not gonna claim we did something. You're not gonna turn this around on us and starts recording her. And again, instead of making her case, she just sticks with that. And only when someone else walks up, do the fake tears start? Yep. Carolyn Bryant, the woman whose lies got Emmett Till brutally murdered, recently died. And I made a video saying how- Okay, so you get the point. So a white man, this white man is calling her out. And other white people are calling it out as saying what we're saying. The tactic she used was based on old school racism. Yeah? All she should have said is, hey, I paid for this. Look, I paid for it. It's on my account. So there must have been a mistake. She chose to sit here and yell and scream, snatch stuff like a goddamn plantation owner and got called out for it, rightfully so. So now the white supremacist trolls are trying to use scare tactics. Oh, defamation, defamation, oh, defamation. No, we're calling it as we see it. Hell, hell, no, not, no. I don't think she was just trying to scare them. That was one thing. I suspect that she was possibly trying to get them boys killed. When they do stuff like that, they hope that a cop comes with guns blazing. I think, and I suspect, not saying for sure, but I suspect that woman was trying to get them boys killed 
doing what she did. She's not dumb. She knows what that, that carries, a white woman sitting up here yelling help with some brother standing here. So she rightfully got called out. Her job rightfully slid her to the left for a minute, which is good because if I go to Bellevue Hospital, if I have a family member at Bellevue, if you have a family member or if you are in Bellevue Hospital, knowing that employee gets down like that as a black person, do you want her as your nurse? Come on, now we're, we're thinking in terms of the safety for the public. S stuff like this has to be openly inquired about. This woman's actions and motives. You have to say, hey, wait a minute. I remember this woman from this video. She did something real funny style. Is that my nurse? Hold on now. I don't want to be sitting up here in a hospital gown in the wind fling it open and, and my cash and prizes are showing and she gets to screaming. Is she going to do that? Because I want I want another nurse. You, you, you feel me? I wouldn't want her as my nurse if I'm in the hospital. I'm already down bad and I got her screaming ass up in there. If I look the wrong way or whatever, is she going to start screaming and, and fake crying? Right? Real talk. Real talk. So people have a right to call out that behavior, especially if you work at a place where you're dealing with the public. Yeah? People should know what your get down is. People should know what your get down is. And I see we have some of the white supremacist trolls in here. Welcome. I see you in here. You're desperate. I see you're desperate. So now they're, they're upset. And now and let me go back to the, the, the white gentleman who called it out. I want y'all to see, like, the types of responses that he's getting. Look at the types of responses he's getting from those in the dominant society. Hold on one second. Where is that thing? Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Where? Right here. So this is the response he's getting from white supremacists for calling racism out. They don't like when a white person calls it out. This is what it's all about right here. Look at this, folks. Another troll. You abandon your race so you could side, side with the niggas and scum of the earth. When the cleansing comes... You and the rest of the race traders will burn in the fires of war. You are dishonorable and lower than the low. And this is what you look like, spread, monkey, groomer, whatever. What is that? And this is what you look like, spread, you monkey, groomer, cope on the internet. Okay, I don't know what that means. So they're looking at him as a race trader. All right. See, this is why a lot of people in the dominant society really don't speak out. And I, and I take my hat off to this guy for speaking out. You got to be brave within the dominant society to do that because they'll label you as a race trader. That's what it's all about. It's all about you better get on code. You got to get on code. Look, this is us against them. And when we get on code with a lie, run with the lie. You got to run with the damn lie, man. Come on. We all know it's a big lie, but we got to get on code and you got to run with it. If you don't run with the lie, you're a race traitor. Yeah? They whip them on code. See, you better understand, in the dominant society, when they get off code, there's punishment. See, a lot of people in the dominant white society, they don't like the punishment that comes with um, the truth. Sometimes if you're just a white person who spits the truth, about racism and white supremacy, part of the punishment is, wait, are you defending niggas? Well, you sound like a nigga lover. And nigga lovers get treated like niggas and white people don't want to get the N-word treatment. They do not want to get the N-word treatment. Yeah, they know what that means. They don't want that. You don't want to be on the outs. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you got to be brave to really speak truth to power like that. 
I didn't watch the fight, by the way. I got to look at the fight. People keep inquiring about the fight. I didn't watch the Haney fight. I didn't see it, but I got to check it out and see what it was about. So anyway, <clears throat> so the white supremacists are all getting on code. And speaking of the headquarters of white supremacy, Fox News jumped in on it and they threw me under the bus real quick, as they always do. I'm used to it. So this is Fox News <laughs> talking about the case and talking about how, you know, the impact that it's made. And Fox News called me out and by name and threw me under the bus, which they do often, so I'm kind of used to it. But this is Fox News' take on it. All right. Here's Fox. Here they go. That has endangered so many black men in the past. And another race-obsessed lunatic named Tariq Nasheed called Conry a, quote, suspected white supremacist woman. He even claimed one of the teens had paid for the bike, and she tried to steal it from him. His tweet has been seen nearly five million times. Now, incidentally, that has endangered so many black men in the past. Okay. So I'm a race-obsessed lunatic. <laughs> Boy, that's big coming from Fox News, ain't it? Yeah, Will Kane. Wasn't he on ESPN or something? Yeah, so that's big coming from Fox News. That's real big from Fox News. You know? I'm Fox News, who built their bones off anti-black racism, called me a race-obsessed lunatic. Yeah? They, they, every, they, they throw me under the bus on Fox all the time. Yeah, they always throw me on the, under the bus, so I'm, I'm used to it. But notice how his tweet has been seen over 5 million times. He's, when you have an impact like that, when you start reaching millions and millions of people like that on the grassroots, on the grassroots level, they go on alert. Oh, they go on alert. Because when those many people are watching, Things get done. As we saw, people start getting laid off their jobs. And they hate, they don't want a black person having that kind of influence. They go on alert. They got to discredit him immediately. Wait a minute. This, this is not just some fringe Negro. This Negro got five, six million people watching what he does. Wait a minute. That's a problem. We got to discredit him. They don't like that. They got to start discrediting heavy. And then we control what the narrative is. Yeah? Real talk. So we got to understand the game. These people, the white supremacists, are really trying to get revenge. They're trying to fight back against people calling them out. Out there in Florida, you know, DeSantis stopped basically black studies in schools and then made it mandatory for Asian American studies in school. And this is one of the reasons why. They don't want us talking about white supremacy. See, they want to play the game and escape the name. And understand, white supremacy, the word, they hate for us to use that because of the stigma now, but that's their word. White supremacy is your word, dominant society. Why are you calling me a white supremacist? That's, you called yourself a white supremacist for decades, not decades, for centuries. You drilled it into our heads, into our psyches, that you are white supremacists. That is your term. You went out of your way to write books, to create laws, to do advertisements, edicts, and different acts specifying and using the word white supremacy. That's your word. That is your word, and you hate that we give your word back to you. You're the one who have statues and monuments up all over the country of Confederate soldiers whose ideology was white supremacy. Their words, you guys have Henry Grady statues of him in Atlanta and things named after him and his whole ideology was about promoting white supremacy. You got national and, and state parks named after Confederates and other people who claim to be white supremacists. You guys got Thomas Jefferson on money and you got this man all over the place. 
And he used the word white supremacy, talking about how supreme the white race is. Abraham Lincoln talked about how supreme the white race is. These are your people. These are your words. Robert E. Lee, I went to a school called Robert E. Lee as a kid. These are your people. You understand? These are your words. Y'all made movies like Birth of a Nation. Y'all prop up these white feminists who use the term white supremacy. Elizabeth um, Cady and all of these people. They were running around talking about how their form of feminism will uphold white supremacy. You guys still prop them up. Huh? That's your word. See, don't, don't let them play this game where they want to try to distance themselves from something they created. Because, see, they badgered us over the head with white supremacy. So now the name of the game is to pretend that there is no more white supremacy, but you still want to practice it. So you're not going to play the game and escape the name. You're not going to do that. And the Karen tactics are going to get um, called out. Hold on. Speaking of Karen tactics. Hold on one second. Let me show you all something. This guy here, one of these right wingers. This guy here, Matt Walsh, who's liked over there on the, white, the, the right wing. This is what Matt Walsh is saying about the term Karen. Because see, now... They don't like that. We're getting codified and calling these Karens out. Matt Walsh said, Karen is a racial slur. If I divisively refer to a random black woman I find annoying as Shaniqua or whatever, everyone would consider it racist. The Karen slur is used to dismiss and degrade white women. That's the whole point. No, it's not. It's meant to call out an action from white women who are practicing white supremacy. Karen is not a, Shaniqua is a denigration of black women as a race, as a whole, just for existing. Uh, the Shaniqua thing, the black woman don't even have to be doing nothing and y'all sit over there, oh, look at that Shaniqua or whatever racial epithet. See, that's the difference. We only refer to somebody as a Karen if they do something, something that's actionable, reflective of white supremacy. Plus, you already use these Shaniqua epithets already. So y'all can't threaten us with none of this stuff. You do it already. <clears throat> you already have 4chan and all these websites where y'all sit up all day denigrating black people. You do it already. We see police agencies and text messages from police officers sitting up here just randomly using racial epithets against black innocent black people all the time. You already do it. Yeah, it's not the same. They're always looking for some kind of comparative racism. It ain't comparative to white supremacy. And speaking of comparative racism, did y'all see Marjorie Green? She tried to pull a Karen move. Let me play her. She tried to do a Karen move where she started talking about Jamal Bowman and she started talking about how she felt threatened. Listen to her. Here she goes. Now she's a victim, how she's trying to f make herself into some kind of victim talking about Jamal Bowman. Hold on. Listen to this. I had to have so much security there was not enough i was swarmed it's all on video everyone can see this but i will tell you what's on video is jamal bowman shouting at the top of his lungs cursing calling me a horrible calling me a white supremacist which i take great offense to that is like calling a person of color the n-word which should never happen oh stop they always trying to say calling them anything is like calling them the N-word. No. No, calling you a white supremacist or a suspected white supremacist is not the same as somebody calling us the N-word. Because we've never put any policies together calling ourselves niggas. 
We've never put any policies or laws together calling ourselves that. Your community put policies, laws, edicts, books, curriculums, all of that stuff calling yourselves white supremacists and ingraining that into our brain. Yeah? It ain't the same whatsoever. All right, let me play the rest. Top of his lungs cursing, calling me a horrible, calling me a white supremacist, which I take great offense to. Okay. I could have swore. Didn't I see her with some kind of Confederate flag? That is like calling a person of color the N-word, which should never happen. Calling me a white supremacist is equal to that, and that is wrong. Jamal Bowman was down there cursing at me, telling me to get the F out of there. And he was leading the mob right outside the vehicle I was sitting in. We have this all on video. And then at, on the Capitol steps yesterday. Well, here comes the rape fantasy. Here comes the rape fantasy. They, they love, it gets all freaky and rapey. This it. Okay. He was the one that approached me. Even CNN reported that. Yelling, shouting, raising his voice. He has aggressive... Uh, his physical mannerisms are aggressive. Uh oh, 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 oh. He, 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 here comes the rapey talk. Uh oh, they, it always goes there. You're not a white supremacist, but it always, his, 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 his physical, he was all big and black over me. Oh, it always goes there. Here we go. It, it gets into some kind of fantasy talk. Here, here it goes. Oh, his physical. Oh, oh his physical. It was just a big old ball of blackness. Uh oh. Oh, you let him keep talking. It the 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 fantasy rape scene start coming through. He's raising his voice, he has aggressive. Uh, his physical mannerisms are aggressive, and he just recently uh, shoved Thomas Massey um, at just outside the house chamber. I think there's a lot of concern about Jamal Bowman. So, and, and I am concerned about it. I feel threatened by him. Um, he not only led a mob, mob there, but his boisterous lies. And I'll tell you another thing he said outside there. He was saying, save your party. I kept telling him, no, save the country. It's not about political parties. We shouldn't care about political parties. We should care about the country because no matter what our political beliefs are, Jamal Bowman, I don't know what his political beliefs are. I know what mine are, but we both, we both swore an oath to serve the country here in Congress as representatives. So I, I am very concerned about Jamal Bowman, and he's someone that people should watch. Oh, Lord. Oh, they, she, she tried, to, tried to act like she was cold. He's his physical. He's, he's boisterous. And he's, he's, I'm threatened. Oh, God, I thought he was going to beat me with his cock. <laughs> He was so big and so black and his boisterous, his boisterous lies. What is that? His boisterous lies. She tried to use every euphemism for big. Oh, this, she, she wanted to say big and black so bad. <laughs> she wanted to say big and black. She used every euphemism she could to substitute big and black. Oh God, his boisterous voice and his physical ambiance. God, a big mass, this big old plantation buck. I mean, a boisterous voice. I'm sorry, I'm not a racist. God. Jamal Bowman. got this big strapping Negro. I mean, oh my God, I mean, big boisterous. Meanie, he's a meanie. Oh, she wanted to go old school. She, it was on the tip of her tongue. <laughs> this big, sweaty behemoth. This big old, sweaty behemoth of a Sambo buck. Oh, God. His voice was so deep and rich. And he was directing it at my vagina. I mean, oh, my ears. I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> oh, she tried it. Boy, you can tell she wanted to say big and black so bad. 
his boisterous voice. <laughs> Y'all white women kill me. Uh, that's fantasy talk. That's not like the beginning. That's not like a porno. Hello, police. I think there's a big boisterous Negro outside of my room. Oh, God. A cock just came in my window. I'm so scared. I gotta go hide my pussy. Stop. Oh, that, that was her fantasy. Oh, she was fantasizing. Oh, she was fantasizing heavy. <laughs> but listen, man. We got to watch these folks out here. We got to watch the language, man. The language is important. Speaking of language, speaking of language, and speaking of Jamal Bowman and the Black Democrats, man, the NAACP, they put out this um, advisory for, um, what is all cap? They put out an advisory for Florida because of DeSantis. This is political theater. And the, the advisory was this. You know, um, let, me, let me make it shorter. Hold on. NAACP issues travel advisory for Florida over DeSantis's aggressive attempts to erase black history. All right. Man, see, they use us as the Trojan horse, all right? This is the problem I have with the NAACP and the damn Democrats. You say black at first, you'll use us as the Trojan horse, and then when you read the article, you go down... Civil rights organization warn the state is openly hostile towards African Americans, people of color, and LGBTQ individuals. See, yeah, this is for LGBT and immigrants. This ain't for us. We ain't, I know, no, no, no. Don't stop using us to Trojan horse everybody else in. All right, this is on the NAACP website. Travel advisory in Florida. This is all political theater. We ain't doing that. Y'all being flunkies in NAACP. We ain't playing that game. Um, China feels at the NAACP. This formal notice states Florida is openly hostile towards African Americans, people of color, LGBTQ. Before traveling to Florida, please understand that the state of Florida devalues and marginalizes the contributions of and challenges faced by African Americans and other communities of color, meaning immigrants. We're good. NAACP CEO Derek Johnson. Is Derek Johnson Caribbean? And that's all y'all need to know about that. Is, is he Caribbean, by the way? Yeah, we ain't playing that game, man. We're not doing that. We ain't doing that no more. Yeah, we are not doing that no more. Y'all not going to use us to Trojan horse all of this other stuff in. What's up, Dub CH? I see you. We ain't playing that game no more, man. Look, if we got something politically for us, it's going to be politically for us, man. We're going to stop this thing where we're shy and scared to talk about what's needed for foundational black Americans. We're not playing that game. We have to get things done, and we got to stop being afraid. Black families, stop being afraid to say we need things for us, for Foundation of Black Americans. That's what it is. We need things for us. And speaking of things for us, family, I'm still, we're putting together a um, children's book centered around the museum. That's coming soon. Um, we're doing things in alphabetical order. Um, I need some more help from the family. I've been getting some good advice on some of the, the alphabets we should cover um, got two more alphabet. We got I, I got E missing and S missing. Um, help me out, family. Name a significant Black history figure whose last name starts with E. Also, give me a significant Black history figure whose last name starts with the letter S. So, I could think of Medgar Evers, but I want to think of something something that's not commonly known. A lot of stuff in the book, the coloring, not, not coloring book, but the children's book, and it's going to be a young adult's book too. It's We're not going to make it too kitty, kitty, kitty. We're going to make it so that children can enjoy it and young adults can enjoy it too. So, um, the letter E, a significant black history figure whose last name starts with E, 
and a significant black history figure whose last name starts with S. Duke Ellington, okay, who else? Malcolm Shepard, who already got Malcolm X, all right? He's e, a black American woman, Sam Sneed, Elijah McCoy, his first name, I think he said James Evans. Okay, who else besides Duke Ellington? All right, throw some names. Bobby Seale, okay, that's that's a cool one. Who else? Throw some more names out there. Mm -hmm. I think it says Sam, I think it says O.J. Simpson. Robert Small, that's a good one, Robert Small. Eli Whitney. Tupac Shakur, we said Percy Earl. <laughs> Not Percy Earl. Who else? Patrick Ewing. <laughs> man, man, who else? Who else? Throw some more names at me. Was uh, wasn't um Annie Easley a part of the um that Hidden Figures movie? Wasn't she a part of the Hidden Figures movie? Wasn't that kind of about her, right? If I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, yeah, RIP to Brother Jim Brown. I, I did a broadcast about Jim Brown the other day. He said, for example, Dr. Sebi. Okay, Dr. Sebi's a good one. Who else? Afeni Shakur. All right, Betty Shabazz. All right, looks at Sheila E. Hilarious, man, 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 man. Hold on, hold on one second. All right, so yeah, good ideas. I'm, I'm writing some of these ideas down. Y'all gave some very good ideas. And by the way, all the people who are new in here. Um, get your tickets to the FBA Expo happening next Saturday in Dallas, Texas. Get your tickets to the FBA Expo Dallas. Go to FBAExpo.com to get your tickets. FBAExpo.com. We've got a lot of people in here. Family, look, do me a favor. Family, everybody, see that share button right here? Hit the share button. Put this on your Twitter. Everybody here now, post this on Twitter. It's going to take you three seconds to hit the share button and hit this on Twitter. Everybody, all at 5,000 people in here, let's do that all at once. Everybody, on the count of three. One, two, three. Hit the share button, throw it on Twitter right now, ladies and gentlemen. Hit the share button, throw it on Twitter. We're gonna do that now. Let everybody know that we're live here. But um, like I said, man, the trolls, the white supremacist trolls are trying to get revenge and another thing they like to do is try to, they're trying to remix history. This is what that whole stop woke stuff is, what they're trying to do because of the hint, the impact of the movies like Hidden Colors and others. These movies are extremely impactful. It has woken a lot of people up. That's where the whole woke movement started to pop off because of the Hidden Colors films. I hate to pat myself on the back, but I gotta speak truth to power. People are waking up, not allowing themselves to be miseducated, because now we have put the truth out there in so many ways, and we're challenging the status quo as, the, as far as how they teach history, and we're not allowing them to lie to us. Now that we're asking for reparations, or we're demanding reparations, we see a lot of lies popping off at us like this right here. We start talking about reparations. We see common lies like this. Because we're talking about reparations, the white supremacists like putting up stuff like this about the Civil War. Consider your reparations paid in full, courtesy of the blood, sweat, tears, and lives of Americans. 
This is a common lie <clears throat> that the white supremacists like to tell. That we got paid our reparations for the lives of the good-hearted white people in the North that died to free us. And I'm saying, black family, don't ever let them get away with that lie. Do not ever let them get away with that hot, funky lie. Nothing can be further from the truth. These people in the North were not fighting to free us. No, they were not. The Civil War was started to keep the Union together because the South was going to branch out and become their own nation. There would not be a United States as we know it. The South said, we're powerful enough to bounce because we got all the slave labor down here. Yeah, we send you the raw materials, but we got the plug here. <clears throat> so y'all can kick rocks. That's what the Civil War was about. And because the North was losing, they had to say, hey, let's let some of the Negroes fight reluctantly. All right? And when they let us fight, that's when they started winning. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's when they started winning. And we got to understand, even Abraham Lincoln said, if it were not for these black freedmen fighting, we would not have won the war. And remember, the Union, would, they were doing real slick stuff. The Union got a lot of black folks killed down in Mississippi in the Devil's Punch Bowl. That was the Union doing that. There was another part of the country where the, the Union destroyed a bridge, getting a lot of black folks stuck. So they were doing little shisey stuff behind the scenes. The Union were, they weren't really friends of us. We fought in the Civil War and we contributed to the victory of that war, freeing ourselves. And understand this, all the wars we fought in, the Revolutionary War, if it weren't for foundational black Americans and their participation in that, they would not have won that. You understand? It was, we, we know about Crispus Attucks and we know that there were black people who were fighting for their freedom on this side. The, the British said, hey, look, y'all fight on, y'all fight for us, you'll get your freedom, we'll send you up there to Nova Scotia, whatever. But over here, they were giving black folks freedom for their participation. And you had a lot of foundational black Americans who were heroes of the Revolutionary War. You had brothers like James Amistad, he was um, a brother who was a double agent. He was um, finessing the British. He was telling the British, hey, you know, uh, I'll work for you guys. So Y'all going to give me my freedom. And, you know, I'll work for you. But he was getting information from the British and then warning the, the patriots over here, saving their lives many, many times. There was another brother named Jack Sisson. He was a very important brother in the Revolutionary War because one of George Washington's um, right-hand men got kidnapped. Um, Charles Lee, I think, I can't remember what his name is, but he got snatched up. So they, the Patriots needed to get a higher up on the British side. They needed, they needed to get a, a, um, a high up British general. So there was a guy named Prescott and it was the black dude Jack Sisson, who knew how to navigate boats, he was a very good boatsman, and he found the British general and broke into the spot and got him, went and physically got him, and exchanged him for George Washington's boy. That was a very important part of the Revolutionary War. That helped win the Revolutionary War. Some of the black fighters were sniping off some very important British generals. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm, I say that to say we played a very important part in the development of this country <clears throat> from top to bottom. Yeah? We played a very important role from top to damn bottom. Yeah? Yes, indeed. We served in all the wars and helped win these wars. Let's be clear. We just weren't on, on some sideline peripheral stuff. We were helping to win these wars, man. Yeah? Real tall. We're doing phenomenal things. Yeah, Peter Salem, yeah. 
Yes, indeed. Heavy history. Well, we got a lot of folks in here. Almost 5,000 people. Well, we got over 5,000 people in here. And by the way, since y'all up in here, don't forget your FBA flags. Get your FBA flags. FBA flags at officialfba.com. Officialfba.com, ladies and gentlemen. Now, another thing, how the white supremacists like minimizing stuff. I saw this on CNN talking about um, Jordan Neely. You know, they had the funeral the other day. And look how they try to minimize stuff. This is CNN. Jordan Neely, the homeless street artist who was the victim of a fatal chokehold on a New York City subway was remembered at his funeral as well-known and loved. Now look how they word that, worded that. He died from a chokehold. You mean he was killed? They make it seem like he it was some kind of freak accident. You see how they word that? He died of a chokehold. No, he got killed. This is how on cold they are with each other. They're on cold. Yeah, the, the trolls are in here heavy. A lot of white supremacist trolls are in here. But this is how on cold they are. He got killed. He got strangled to death. A fatal, he died from a fatal chokehold as if it was some kind of accident, man. Look how they... How they word that stuff, and he, that was a, he was lynched. He was lynched. What's up, Juice? You said your flag wasn't sent yet. Did you? When'd you buy it? Yeah, he was murdered. So yeah, this this yellow journalism, it shows how on code these people are with each other. They are very codified with each other. Boy, we're in here heavy. And by the way, y'all go get the movie American Maroon if you have not seen American Maroon. That's a very good movie, ladies and gentlemen. And we got to study more about what happened in the some of these swamps. Um, I'm still doing a lot of research about the Great Dismal Swamp. I'm, I'm, I've uncovered so much stuff, and we talk about it in the movie American Maroon. The Great Dismal Swamp, man, out there in North, North Carolina, Virginia, there's a lot of history to that, but I could do a whole different film just about that swamp alone. There's a lot. They, you got those people, you got archaeologists over there studying. Um, there's some, something real deep was going on over there in that swamp that scared the hell out of the, the white supremacists. Dude, when I do a lot of research and see, they were shook about that damn swamp over there. The Great Dismal Swamp. They were shook about that swamp, dude. That that swamp had the slave owners all up and down the East Coast terrified because, number one, they couldn't go in there. They couldn't go in the swamp. Yeah? A lot of things were killing him. If There were gases in there and mosquitoes and poisonous snakes and the fumes, if that didn't kill them, they would go in there and the brothers would kill them. They wouldn't come out alive. So they were terrified of going in that swamp. And that was a sanctuary and they don't like talking about brothers and sisters living in those swamps, in the Great Dismal Swamp, because there were actually communities in there. You had a sophisticated community in there. Yeah, a lot of natural medicine was coming out of there, too. They were making furniture and making musical instruments in there. It was heavy. They were terrified, and they, they don't know exactly how many was in there. They they tried to say a couple of thousand. No, I believe way more than a couple of thousand. Some people said it was possibly up to 40,000 people up in that swamp because the swamp was like 2,000 square miles. Yeah. So... It was heavy. It was heavy, and it terrified them at the time. Your, your girl, a girl took you to the swamp? Yeah, they don't like talking about that because that's one of the few places where the white supremacists actually took an L, and the black people didn't. The black people never took an L in that swamp. Yeah, the quicksand, they would get caught up in the quicksand, everything. And the black people didn't take an L. And here's the thing, they tried to... Yeah, man, it's 
So I'm, I'm really, really doing a lot of research. I'm seeing what was really going on in there because these, the, it was a, there were rumors about ghosts and spirits and stuff like that. There, it was not only our brothers and sisters putting in that work. I'm trying to see what was the supernatural stuff going on in that damn swamp that had these white supremacists shook. Because um, initially, they were going, they used that area, the center of the swamp going back centuries and centuries ago, even before the Europeans came, from what I understand, they were doing some kind of, um, some ceremonies in there, some kind of spiritual ceremonies. But yeah, it was the size of Delaware. It's a huge place. It was big. It was big. So there was some stuff going on in there. They were afraid to go in there. And George Washington tried to drain it. He tried to drain the swamp. And here's the thing. They tried to... Um, they wanted to build a canal going into the center of the swamp. So they had some, you know, who else are they going to get to dig a ditch or build something where enslaved black people? So they tried to build a canal and that failed because you had black, black slaves doing the work for them. And the work was backbreaking and grueling. So black people was like, you know what? What the hell am I digging this ditch? ditch for in a swamp I can just bounce and go live in the swamp with the rest of my brothers and that's what kept happening the black people who they kept trying to get to dig um, the canal for the swamp they kept dipping and moving into the maroon community inside the swamp they're like fuck all this so they couldn't get it built they couldn't white people see when they start talking about what white people ain't white people didn't build shit weren't building nothing at the time. When they killed me talking about it, it was, it, was, it was a couple of Germans and a couple of Irish. They weren't building shit. They didn't build nothing. They needed black folks to do the building. They couldn't get nobody else to dig them ditches and um, open up roads and um, build the bridges. They couldn't get nobody else to do it. And if a black person um, just bounced, they were ass out. And that's what happened. They tried to... Um, um, Tang the swamp and the brothers just said, fuck this nigga. I'm about to live in the swamp. They ran away in the swamp. They're like, we got to stop sending black people to work up in there. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Because black people who tried to work on building that canal, there was a couple of black people dying. I mean, because you're working in water and hot ass weather and there's no wind getting in the swamp because of the, the, the shrubbery and the bushes. So like, I ain't about to sit here and die and I can go live with the homies. Yeah. So it's a rich history. It's a hell of a rich history. Yeah. A black woman. Yeah, yeah. One of the black people, it was a black woman, Grace Wisher, who um helped make the modern American flag. Our sister Grace Wisher. Yeah. But a very real history. It's a heavy history. They don't like talking about it. But they study it, though. Yeah, they study it heavy. That's a history that has been very much overlooked. Y'all can learn a little bit about it in the movie American Maroon. We talk about maroonage all over the, the, the United States. But really study the movie American Maroon. Very good movie, man. Yeah. The Algonquin natives, yeah. They, they helped the people when it came to the swamp, yeah. But yeah, they've been doing archaeological digs over there. And they don't let people go to certain parts of the swamp now. Because they don't want people seeing what was all that stuff being uncovered. They had very sophisticated communities in that swamp, man. You had people living in there for centuries, generation after generation. Some people had never even left the swamp and survived and thrived. You know? And... They don't like that narrative of us being self-sufficient like that. See, the narrative is that we can't do anything on our own and we need white mommy, white daddy. They can't tell you about us living in those swamps like that, showing how self-sufficient we were, you know? Real heavy history. You, saw, you thought I said Grape Swisher? No, her name is Grace Wisher. That was a, the foundational black American teen who helped sow and create the first or the modern American flag. What's up from Buffalo, New York? Shout out to Buffalo. 
But yeah, we got to stop being afraid to learn history, and we got to stop being punks about certain things. Sometimes we get punked about. So sometimes people hit me up. I I hate this one. Tariq, I like your message, but you be saying nigger sometimes. I like your message, but sometimes you be using the word nigger a lot. I don't think you should do that. Well, calm down, Cletus. I'll stop that. Sometimes I might use nigger here and there. It doesn't stop. Put your big draws on. All right, let's stop all that whining. That's whining. Don't worry about the language. Look at the message, man. If you're getting the message... Pop your collar to the message. I hate that. Man, I like your message. Who the fuck is that screaming? Who the fuck is that screaming? Who the hell is that screaming? That's my neighbor's kids. But listen. Yeah, just get the message. If the message is good, the message is good. Uh, and I, I, put your big draws on. I hate when people get on that fake out radio. You, you, you said something about something. Like that. Stop though. Stop that. Man up. Life is rough out here, dude. It's a real world out here. The world is harsh. If my language is harsh, that's reflective of what's in the world, nigga. That's that's what it is. Yeah. What's up, Greg? Marcel Dixon. But listen. Uh, but listen. There was a, um, a, a video with this brother. He's kind of a gospel guy, church guy thing. I don't know. And he gives motivational messages. I put up this brother. And he um, puts on, um, he does motivational TikTok videos. Yeah, Bobby Hemmett. Y'all love Bobby Hemmett. Bobby Hemmett had rough language, but Bobby's message was so thorough, you didn't even trip. You know, sometimes the message is just what the message is. You know? Sometimes I might be a little saucy and peppery with the words, but damn, man, this, this is the world we live in, man. Shit, put your big draws on and man up. Yeah? But there's a video. <clears throat> There's a video. I posted of this brother doing a motivational. He does motivational videos. And I posted one of his videos and, you know, we're clowning a little bit. And you'll see why. And the, his message is good, but you'll see why people were clowning a little bit. And there was a couple of people got mad at me in the comment section. Why are y'all clowning this man, Tyreek? This man has a good message. You know, so look. This brother right here, the, the, people were kind of upset because he was getting clowned with his message. This brother here. And he has a good message. But, you know, Mr. Ray Mills, I think that's his name. Hold on. Some of y'all is never going to make it to your destiny until you learn how to clap in the audience for who's on stage. See, y'all, a lot of y'all too busy trying to make it to the stage that you forget to clap in the audience. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? You got to learn to be in the audience. You got to learn how to clap in the audience for who's on stage until it's your turn. Until it's your time. To go on stage. Okay. So a lot of y'all block y'all blessings because y'all don't celebrate y'all brothers and y'all sisters and those that are around you success. No. Okay. Now, look. <laughs> look, listen. Now, look. Now, I like the brother's message. I think his message is great. That brother's message was great. He has a great message. Phenomenal message. Sounds like a good dude. This brother sounds like he's very thorough. It's a positive message, and I love the message. But we're not going to ignore the elephant in the fucking room, all right? We're not going to ignore the elephant in the room. There's a problem here. This dude's teeth looks like Roblox characters, all right? That's a fact of reality. And there are some people who are actually in the comments section mad. How dare you, Tyree? This man message is good. You gonna talk about his teeth is like that? Hold on, you that you can't talk about people. Sometimes people get suicidal. You talking about them? Let's calm down. Let, okay, first of all, 
first of all, this dude shouldn't be suicidal because we're not talking about a physical deformity that he was born with. The problem is, and it's okay to clown because this dude went and got this done to himself, all right? These are teeth that he went and had put in. So we're talking about a business decision that went wrong. It's not talking about a, a natural um, <laughs> um, um, deformity or anything. This dude went down to Mexico or wherever he got and got some discount teeth and supersized them. <laughs> so yeah, that's something that, fair, that's fair game. That's fair damn game. Don't complain about us talking about this man. See, he went and got these teeth. That man went to, to the Wish app and ordered some teeth, and that's what came. Come on, that's funny. And I think he got a little upset about it. <laughs> I understand that people got something to say. It ain't about what you say, about what God say. Even God said, hey, man, I didn't give you teeth that big. <laughs> God said no. God said, hey, don't put me in it. I gave you normal teeth when you were born, my G. God said, hey, that's, those are teeth from Satan. You, you've forsaken me. You've forsaken me with them teeth. So don't put it on God. No. The dude went and got some big ass teeth. This dude just should have stuck with medium. Yeah, that's, that's, you're going to get, get this work. Yeah, I know he has a positive message, you know. We're going to call him Teethy Jakes. Not T.D. Jakes, but Teethy Jakes. Teethy Jakes has a positive message, but them teeth, brother, you got to go and um, get your teeth redone. They did too much. You know, it was like buy one inch, get another inch free. You don't get a discount tooth job like that. Less is more sometimes. You know? My God. Anyway, <laughs> let me get out of here. We got a lot of people in here still. And we're gonna win. But shout out to Teethy Jakes. Shout out to him. That's still our brother. We love his message. All right. But dude. <laughs> Don't bite down on a piece of corn on the cob, nigga. This nigga eat a whole corn on the cob without using his hands. It's teeth Keith. <laughs> anyway, man, go get your tickets for the FBA Expo happening in Dallas next week. FBAexpo.com. Ladies and gentlemen, FBAexpo.com. <laughs> Also, go to official FBA, officialfba.com to get your FBA flags. Um, vendors, y'all need to sign up now if you want to vend. We got, look, we got reasonable rates for vendors, especially the food vendors. We got so many reasonable rates for you to come and vend your products. Reasonable rates, man. We need y'all vendors to come on through. We got a lot of phenomenal black-owned businesses, and that's going to be the highlight to me seeing all of the brothers and sisters, the different black-owned businesses. We got dozens and dozens of them that's going to be a part of it. I can't wait to do business with you. That's my favorite part, seeing the different kind of black business owners we have around the country who's going to come down and show off what you got. So, man, be involved, man. We got um, a lot of vending space left. Go to um, FBAexpo.com. Y'all start signing up tonight, man. FBA Expo. Dot com. All right. I'm up out of here, man. Y'all have a good